So this is our 79 or second gen Bronco. Uh, Tim is here on a Sunday masking it up so we can stay on schedule. I didn't ask him to do it. He just wanted to get on schedule. But uh, this one's really cool. The customer's name is Mitch. He's been really cool through the whole build. He initially brought us the car to, actually, we talked about a Mustang before he even brought the car, but realized we were doing another Bronco and wanted to do his Bronco instead. So uh, second gen 79, big body, uh, was in decent shape. Didn't really have a whole lot of rust, um, but wanted to just do mechanicals. So we spent about two or three months, um, doing everything mechanical, um, resealing the engine, having the transmission rebuilt, found a cracked bell housing, had that replaced, um, went through the transfer case and resealed that, uh, got the, um, uh, the chassis uh, cleaned up and painted, did the undercoating, brand new wiring, um, Aces EFI, uh, Vintage Air, and Dakota Digital, and uh, just a basic sound system on it, just to get him like driving. Um, and he drove that for six to eight months. I'm terrible with dates, so I apologize. But he drove that for less than a year. Um, loved it. His plan was always to paint the car and never really had a problem. Um, well, we had some parts failures that we normally do, like sway bar bushings uh, destroyed and uh, a, a brand new um, drag link bushing went bad right off the bat, causing some death wobble. That's just the nature of when you're installing hundreds of new parts. Um, brought us the car a couple months ago for paint and body, which that's a long process. Normally they're in paint jail for six months or so. Um, this is... I want to say about eight to 10 weeks of progress. And we've gone all the way down to metal. We've replaced the quarter panel on the driver's side, had some previous damage on there. Um, had a bunch of dents uh, repaired, actually had to replace, I believe it was both doors. Um, we had to do both doors because one was really rusted and the other one had some damage that we just didn't know about. When we start stripping it out of the metal, we find that kind of thing. But that's what we do. That's all of our paint jobs. Again, that's my OCD. We try and strip everything down to absolute bare metal. Um, I don't like sandblasting because it's going to cause a bunch of extra warping and stuff that just takes more time. I'd rather spend the time up front and sand it down by hand and really discover what we have. Uh, and then it gets uh, acid etch primer and then it gets an epoxy and then we work on top of that. Um, and you'll see a lot of things where we're going through and, uh, and kind of sanding down and leveling everything out. And this one is not a show car build. This one is a driver quality. Um, so we're not doing four extra steps of blocking. We're not doing three or four stages of 2K. We're trying to keep the material uses to a minimum and the time usage to a minimum. So it's a paint job that's going to last 20 years, but not necessarily be an absolute you know, piano finish on it. It's going to have some like OE quality orange peel, which we can show you in the, in the tailgate that's done. Um, color scheme on this one's pretty cool. It's going to be the uh, Ford Heritage colors, so it's going to be race red. I can't remember the name of the gray, but it's a really heavy metallic gray, and then basically black. Um, primary color is gray, huge red accents along the side. Uh, hood's going to be gray, and the fiberglass topper is going to be a gloss black. A lot of people do like a semi gloss, but we wanted to go gloss black to match the engine bay, which I'm sure we'll get some footage of in just a minute. Um, excited for this one to be done. It's going to be really cool. It's kind of a showcase of a driver quality build, you know, done in stages. So the paint happened after everything else was done. It was really easy to blow it apart again because everything was brand new. Well, a uh, little shop tour, the projects we're currently working on, uh, a little bit of a background on some of the ones that are close to being done or close to going home, just so I can kind of give you an idea of, of what we do here at Sixes. Uh, the first one is going to be the Series 1 Datsun 240Z. Uh, the customer, Jeff, brought it to us, uh, and it was in fantastic shape. I mean, it was, it really was. Um, it needed help uh, in every aspect, but it wasn't a complete rust bucket. So he wanted it restored. Um, OEM plus, so to say. So we went through and completely stripped it down, put it on a rotisserie, tried to find some of the original paint because it had been repainted a couple different shades of yellow throughout its life. Found the original paint coat, uh, got the best match we could with a base clear using Glasserit and CC2000 for the for the clear coat, uh, Sherman Williams, and was really able to nail it. Like it, it turned out beautiful, um, really, really close to the original. And it being a series one, it's kind of hard to find parts for it, but we've finally been able to find most everything we need. A uh, couple, couple things we got to do, a couple fine tuning things, like put the trim in the in the uh, windows, uh, in the window seal. Sorry, put the hood on. But it is running AC. All the factory harness has been repaired. Everything works, runs, drives, handles like a dream. So I'm excited to get it back to the customer. Um, we'll lift it up in a little bit and show you the underside because it looks just as good as the top side. Like I said, all the, all the suspension components are powder coated. The underside's undercoated. Uh, the new lines, new wiring, new everything. So that one's really cool. Uh, this C10 is actually the same owner. Again, Jeff. We have a lot of Jeffs for some reason, but that's, uh, that's Jeff. Um, 
it's a 73 C10 Stepside short bed. Uh, he bought it at an auction. Luckily, it wasn't too far restored or gone, so we were able to do the same kind of thing. Um, it's got the same motor that it was. It's on the same chassis that it was. We never actually pulled the cab off the body, uh, off the frame, sorry, because it had new cap bushings already and everything lined up pretty good. So that one was a lot easier to restore. Um, and we've just gone through and cleaned everything up, make sure everything's working, put a new wood bed in it. Um, and we're going to go through and do the interior next. He's got a whole box of parts that hopefully they're the right stuff, but it came with the car. So we'll be, we'll be going through that next week. Um, but these two will be got done pretty, you know, pretty soon, a couple weeks, maybe. Uh, we'll go over to the 442. Um, this one's a show car paint job that we're doing for David. Uh, it's really close to being done. Also, we're just putting the final, like, stickers on it the the gold stripes for the uh, 442 uh, olds kind of package um it was a beautiful car to begin with and he wanted a show car out of it so that was kind of hard to match but i think we nailed it um got to do a final cut and polish once it's all assembled and then it's ready to go home again probably next week or uh, or a week or so after that um this one's already done this one was uh finished a few months ago or a month or two ago and they've been driving it so it's back in for its thousand mile inspection this one's running aces got a blueprint motor on it rebuilt transmission brand new harness already had um vintage air and some subpar components on it that we've replaced so it, we basically had to go through and redo the whole thing unfortunately this guy paid a lot of money bought it from barrett jackson and it was just not what it was supposed to be so we've gone through and replaced almost everything on it it was it was kind of a just snowball on this one but it is great his wife's been driving it absolutely loves it that was the whole point so that's a win um this one will be going back again next week we're going to get up on a lift make sure nothing's broken but i drove it over here and it was fantastic ac radio all that good stuff um we'll go back this way and take a look at the bel-air actually it one's this one's going to be really fun we're waiting on some parts that are in uh powder coating jail right now but they'll be out soon 57 Bel Air. Um, customer originally bought us a body that was just way too far gone to do anything with. Had about a half inch of Bondo on everything. Um, and we had to replace all the quarter panels, all the doors, basically everything except the roof and the trunk pan was replaced. Um, it's on Air Ride. It's got an LS2 uh, running in a Holly system. I'm sorry. I didn't choose that. That was the customer's choice. It runs great though, so no complaints there. Um, but the, the goal was no chrome left. So everything that was chrome is now black and everything that was the original body color is now gray. And that was the, just one of super simple colors. Uh, like I said, we're waiting on a few more parts to come back from powder coating. There was about six trips to the powder coaters because the amount of chrome on this car. And we're not happy with the way the hood fits. So we're going to replace the hood. Um, it was a new one. Uh, I didn't fit it well enough to begin with. We're putting it back together. I'm not happy with the panel gap. So that goes in the trash. We'll get another one. That's just kind of how OCD I am. But it's, we're, we're going to make it right. Um, love this car, though. This is going to be sick. Uh, Jason Rathbun with Showtime Upholstery in Rome, who did the show car uh, upholstery for us in the 74 Bronco, which we'll get you some pictures of is going to be doing this one also. So super stoked. It's going to be nuts. And I'm really happy to have our name on this one. But again, underside looks just as good as the top side. Can't really show you because it's so low. And this is it's sitting on rollers. So it's about that far from the ground. And you can drive it that far. We've got bump stops built in. It's got full turning radius. So pretty stoked about that one. Uh, Scott's Camaro 73 uh, solid bumper Camaro. That one's just a restoration. His father had that one new. Um, and we're just going through fixing all the rust. It was a little rustier than we normally like to start with, but nothing we can't handle. Almost done with the rust. We're going to do uh, mini tubs in it. Uh, frames of the powder coaters too with the Bel Air parts. When that comes back, we'll put it all together, put it on its wheels, make sure everything's lined up perfectly. And then that one goes to the paint shop. So uh, there's a uh, C10 long bed in the back that we're building too. We're waiting on some body panels for that one for the uh, cab to come in. When that comes in, we'll get that one in full swing. Uh, this Datsun, I don't like to showcase too much. It is, this is the first car that we ever built. <laughs> We're, we love this car. It is an automatic 5.3 LS. Um, Joe drives this car every day. He's got like 25,000 miles on it since we built it three years ago. He thankfully was patient with me and said, hey, I want to get it rewired. And we're like, that's kind of nuts. But we put power steering in it, like electric power steering in it for him. Uh, factory AC was completely rebuilt and running the, the LS AC compressor and everything else. So we're doing a very simple rewire on it just to make sure all the lights and everything work good. And it'll be going back to him, hopefully for another 25,000 miles or so. But 
Joe is 75 years old, 76 this year, and used to jump out of helicopters, so I can't really tell him not to drive this thing too hard, but coilovers, LS, automatic, he's uh, happy with the gas pedal on that one. So <laughs> we love that guy. It's, it's, it's kind of a, that's our, that's our, our passion project, I would say. We'll, we'll do anything for him. <laughs>